Welcome, this is my instructional video for section 17.1, Triangle Proportionality. Alright, here's the Triangle Proportionality Theorem. It says if a line parallel to the side of a triangle intersects the other two sides, it has to divide those sides proportionally. So here we go, here's a triangle, triangle ABC. We have side BC and then shown um, above that is line EF, which is marked as being parallel to BC. And it tells us down here EF is parallel to BC. So that means the proportion from EA to EB is the same proportion as AF is to FC. And this should make sense because what do we know if these two lines are parallel? Let me get a writing tool out here. So if these two lines are parallel, whatever this angle here at B is, angle 1, this is angle 2 down here, well these two lines are parallel so that means this angle here corresponds to that one so it has to be congruent and this guy is here too for the same reason so corresponding angles between parallel lines cut by a transversal and notice angle A is the same angle for both triangles so both triangles have to be similar similar by the angle angle theorem so angle 3 angle 1 angle 2 angle 3 angle 1 angle 2 so if that's true that means the, the side AE here is proportional to AB, and AF is in the same proportion to AC as EF is to BC. And if the big triangle, so I'm kind of do that here, we've got the big triangle. Okay, I want to grab the triangle, not the other thing. Okay, so we get the big triangle. Then we get the little triangle. E, A, F. So these two guys are proportional. And when you slide this guy in here, <clears throat> that means not, is it just, not only is it proportional uh, this way from left side to right side, but also this part here, I should get a different color. This part here, okay. So if the left side of the red triangle, let's call that... Uh, Well, that's EA, right, is in some proportion to AF. So the, the way this works is EA to AF is in a proportion, well, BE to FC is the same proportion. So these two guys in the same proportion as those two guys are there. And then the whole side to that whole side, that's in the same proportion as well. So there's just proportionality run amok here. That's how it always works. Okay? So here we go to the problem. Uh, let's go back to the, let's go to black marker here. Find the length of CY. So here we go. Uh, CY, I'm going to call that X little x for the length of the side, and I want to compare x to 4. So I'm going to set up my ratio. x goes to 4. So notice this is the bottom part to the uh, top part, so I have to do the same ratio here. The bottom part to the top part, so that's equals the ratio of 10 to 9. And notice this always makes a two-dimensional array. So I can label this. This is bottom. to top this way but then this is the left hand uh, sides and this is the right hand sides and when I solve this the 4 is going to come up here we're going to get x is equal to 40 over 9 so I'm multiplied by 4 on both sides of the equation we do that in a light color we're going to multiply by 4 over here. Oh, that's too light. Can't take that. Let's do it. a bright color. Ah, didn't get it. <clears throat> do a bright color here. So 4, 4 here. So the 4s are going to cross cancel on this side. 
So x is going to equal four, uh, 10 times 4, which is 40 over 9. Notice we can set this up because this is actually a two-dimensional array. We can set it up, hey, we can go uh, left over right. So make that the rows. And then make uh, like this bottom here. Oh, gosh. Spelling, please. Bottom here equals the top and the right hand ratio. So notice I switch what's the what's the rows and the columns, which now became the columns left and right are now the rows, and the rows bottom and top are now the columns here. So bottom on the left, x goes to bottom on the right, 10, just like top on the left, 4 goes to top on the right, which is 9. And now so we're going to multiply by 10 on both sides to get x by itself. And so we still end up with x equals 4 times 10 divided by 9. So whichever way you set up the proportion, there's a lot of flexibility with proportions. You just set it up, I would label, and that forces you, or at least encourage you strongly, to put the right number in the right place. So you get a ratio that's coherent, that makes sense, that's accurate. That's how we do these. So on to the next problem. Find PN. So this is my X here, PN. So basically, I'm going to compare X goes to 5. So this is uh, left side to right side. Left side to right side. Just like up here on the short, things 3 goes to 2. So we're going to multiply by 5 on both sides to get x by itself. So x is equal to 15. Boom, boom. 15 over 2. Fully reduced. Final answer. Yeah, baby. Okay, so find DG. Here's DG here, so I'm going to call that X. So I'm going to go, uh, X goes to, um, let's go here, let's go bottom to top. So instead of going right, uh, right to left, I'm going to go compare bottom to top. So we're going to put the bottom number on the numerator and the top number in the denominator. So X is going to go to 40. Just like on the proportion over here, the bottom number is 24, the top's 32. So 24 goes to 32. Now, this can be reduced. I'm going to do that in a moment because, hey, all I have to do to get rid of the divide by 40 is multiply by 40. Boom, like that. So x is going to equal 24 times 40 divided by 34. Or 32. So 24 is going to be uh, 3 times 8. A factor of that. 40 is going to be 4 times 10. And then 32 factors to 4 times 8. You notice 4 cross cancel, the 8's cross cancel. We're left with 3 times 10 over 1, which is 30. Final answer. Okay, this guy here, find the length of Rn, so that's going to be my x. So I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do the right side to the left side. So we're going to go right side compared to the left side. Notice I can go left over right. So you can put the x on the bottom if you want, but that just makes the algebra solving one more step longer. So why would you do that? So knowing I'm always going to put the x on top, I'm going to go x compared to 10. So the right side here compared to the left side. So x compares or relates to 10, just like right to left on this guy, 5 goes to 8. And then I'm going to multiply by 10 on both sides to get x by itself. So x is equal to 5 times 10, which is 2 times 5. 
and divided by 8, which is 2 times 4. So notice the deuces cancel. 4 is made up of 2 times 2, but that's not going to cancel against the 5s. So this is reduced as far as possible, so I put everything back together. 5 times 5 in the numerator, that's going to be 25 over 4. Final answer. Bada bing, bada bang, bada boom. All right, the converse of proportionality theorem. So what we said a few minutes ago was, hey, if these two lines are parallel, then we got that proportion AE to EB is the same as AF to FC. This is one of those. It's a bidirectional relationship. So if you can show that AE to EB is the same ratio as AF to FC, then that proves that these two guys are parallel. There's our converse, right? So, on the original theorem, back four or five slides ago, five slides ago, it says, hey, the hypothesis is the two lines are parallel. The conclusion is we have that proportion thing happening. And then over here, it's the reverse. The hypothesis is, hey, we've got the proportion thing happening, and the conclusion is those two lines must be parallel. Bam. So verify that the line segments are parallel. The line segments look like these two here, right? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go, I'm going to go left to right. So left goes to right for both. So 21 is going to relate to 42. So 21 compares to 42 just like left goes to right, 15 compares to 30. So I already know that that's actually a true statement. This is true. They are equal. But to verify it, hey, 21 and 42 are both multiples of 7. So this is 3 times 7 over 6 times 7. So the 7s are going to cross cancel. 5 is a common multiple here. So this is 5 times 3 over 5 times 6. So the 5s cancel. 3 over 6 equals 3 over 6. Or they both reduce to one half, right? So one half equals one half. It's true, it does equal. So that means those guys are parallel. That's now a fact and not my opinion. Verify that the line segments are parallel. It looks like we're looking at these guys right here. And given that AC is 36, so this is 36 here from A to C. And BC is 27. So this is 27 all the way from there to there. I should put fences on those, not arrows. Silly me. Okay. So basically, I'm going to do this. So if, if this is 36 and that's 20, that means this guy here is 16. And 27 and 15 makes this guy here is 12. So basically, we're going to see the question is, are these guys... This is the question mark. Are they equal? And I'm going to do, uh, let's do big over small. So I'm going to do uh, top over bottom. So I'm going to do top over bottom. So the top is 16 over 12, the bottom. And is that equal to the top here, which is 20, over the bottom, which is 15? Now, this is reasonable because in both ratios, notice, Hey, the bigger number's on top. So both of these, for sure, are bigger than 1, so they could be equal, right? If this was a, a bigger number here over 12, and these were reversed, 15 over 20, you would know right away they're not equal. There's no way, because this would be more than 1, and that would be less than 1. But in both cases, the numerator is larger than the denominator, so it's possible. So we're going to do some reducing. I see 4 common here. So this is 4 times 4 over 4 times 3. So the 4s will cross cancel. And then it looks like 5 is common here. So this is 5 times 4 over 15, which is 5 times 3. And the 5s are going to cross cancel. Okay. And so what are we left with? 4 thirds equals 4 thirds. That is true. So that is verified. Those lines are parallel. In fact, not my opinion. Okay, verify that TU and RS are parallel, so boom. 
So same thing. I'm going to do this time. I'm going to do big over small. So I'm going to go um, left over right. So we're going to go left over right. And so that's going to be 90 over 72. And this is 67.5 over 54. Okay. So here this is easily reduced by 9. So this is 9 times 10. And then 72 is 9 times 8. So the 9s reduce. And then 10 is um, an 8 or both multiples of 2. So this is 2 times 5 over 2 times 4. So the deuces cancel. So this reduces to 5 fourths. Okay, this one's a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to do this. This is a half, 0.5, so I'm going to double it. So I'm going to multiply by the 1 in the form of 2 over 2. So 2 times 67.5. Uh, will be 120, 15... So 135, and 2 times 54, that's going to be 108. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm thinking, well, is this in a 5 to 4 ratio? That's the question. Is this a 5 to 4 ratio? Well, let's divide 135 by 5. So 135 divided by 5, we're going to get that one. 2 times there, right? 2 times 5 is 10. If the remainder is 3, bring down the 5. 5 goes on 35, 27, or 7 times. So that gives me 35. I subtract, no remainder. This is 5 times 27. Now the question is, does 4 go into 108? Well, it ends in 08, so I know it does. So it's going to make a whole number. I just what whole number is it going to make? All right. So four goes into ten two times. Two times four is eight. We take the difference. That's two. We bring down the eight. Four goes into twenty-eight seven times. Seven times four is twenty-eight. Take the difference there. Remainder is zero. So this guy's four times twenty-seven. So I don't care that twenty-seven is three times nine or three times three times three. The fact is 27 cancels 27, so this does reduce to 5 fourths, and so it is equal. Those guys are parallel. Verified. Bam. For what value of x is gf parallel to hg? Oh, well, this looks like fun. So here we go. I'm going to put the letters on top, right, the variable expressions. So I'm going to go right side to left side. So my setup here, my framework, my structure, ah, my pattern. Oh, my gosh. Who saw that coming? Pattern, right? Right side to left side. So the right side here on, the, on this triangle is 4x plus 4. Or I'm sorry, on the top side here. So 4x plus 4 to 40. And the question is, is that equal to, or we're going to make it equal to, the right side here to the left side there, 5x plus 1 to 45. Oh, how do we solve that? I've got x's on both sides. It's very scary looking. Okay, well, here's what we do. We're going to multiply both sides by 45 times 40. That's going to get rid of the denominators. So, I'll do that in a different color, what I'm doing to this guy. So, we're going to multiply this binomial expression. Actually, both of them. I want to make a thin line there. I thought I hit that. So, we're going to multiply by 45 and 40. So, 45 times 40 to both sides. Notice over here the 45s cancel out. And over here, the 40s cancel out. So you could say this is the same result as if we had cross-multiplied. So that's essentially where cross-multiplying comes from. So 45 times 4x, that's going to be 90 
180x. And then 4 times 45 is 180. Is equal to 40 times 5x. That's going to be 200x. And 40 times 1 is positive 40. And here's the deal. I've got x's on both sides. I'm going to add negative 180x to the left side. That's going to get rid of the x's there. And I'm going to get a uh, resultant number of x's on this side. It's going to be 20. And since the x's are coming to the right, I'm going to move this added number to the left. So I'm going to add its opposite, negative 40. I do it to both sides. So notice I'm adding the same thing to both sides. Negative 180x, negative 40. Negative 180x, negative 40. Over here, the x's cancel. Over here, the 40's cancel. So I get a total of uh, 120. Or no, 140. Where the heck I got my adding skills from? Okay. So 140 is equal to 200x minus 80x is 20x. And then our next step is to divide by 20. To get x by itself. The 20s cancel here, so x is going to equal, okay, 140 is going to be 14 times 10, and then 20, of course, is 2 times 10, so the 10s cross cancel, 14 divided by 2 is 7, and the question says, for what value of x is that parallel, so that's my final answer, I don't have to plug it in, boom. If you want to plug it in to check, you could. 4 times 7 is 28, plus 4 is 32. And then 5 times 7 is 35, plus 1 is 36. So basically the claim here is 32 over 40 is equal to 36 over 45. And here it looks like 8 is common. So this is going to be... 4 times 8 over 40, which is 5 times 8. So the 8's cross cancel and give me 4 fifths. This looks like 9 is common. So this is um, uh, 4 times 9 is 36, and 45 is 5 times 9. And the 9's cross cancel, that gets me 4 fifths. 4 fifths equals 4 fifths. Bam, I so own that sucker. Okay, and I'm going to leave this one to your imagination and just delete it. We're at 22 minutes or 23 minutes. That's long enough for an instructional video. Okay, I hope you got something out of this. If not, you should play back again, at least the parts you don't understand. And if, you, if that sucks, then maybe you should come see me for tutoring. Ciao, baby.